Now, sometimes we struggle to find that connection with Allah. Sometimes we have difficulty connecting with our Lord. Many people say that. We go through that sometimes. Someone says, Sayyid, I really don't enjoy talking to God. I don't enjoy my salah, my prayers. I have difficulty finding that connection. How do we find that connection to our Creator? To the one who inspired us with our lives? To the one who organized the universe for us? How can I find that connection? And why is it that sometimes we struggle to connect with Allah? There are three main reasons why sometimes we struggle to connect with God. The more you come to see His beauty, the more you're able to connect with Him. And the more you enjoy that connection with your Lord. That's one very important reason. A second reason why we cannot connect with God is because we feel that His standards for us are too high. Like someone once said, he said, I think that if I need to please God, I have to walk on eggshells to please this Lord. I don't enjoy that. I don't like that. That does not attract me. I have difficulty connecting to a Lord who has such high standards. No matter what you do, you can't please Him. He wants more. Give more. This is another reason why we cannot connect with God. A third reason why we cannot connect with God is because we don't understand his system and sometimes we're angry at his system. When there is suffering, when there's a problem in our life, when there's a tragedy that we're experiencing, sometimes we begin to hate God. We hate his system. We become very angry. Like one brother once told me, say it, Wallah, Allah enjoys sees me suffering. Now, you may not say that bluntly, but sometimes we do think like that. What's next, God? What are you going to hit me with next? Sometimes we do think that God enjoys sees, seeing us suffering. And that weakens our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We learn from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam how to address these challenges in our lives. Once you come to know Allah and view Him properly, you will find the most beautiful connection with your Lord. Let us examine practical ways to find that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one begins with knowing your Lord and knowing the attributes of Allah. Allah has beautiful attributes. A believer constantly reflects on the attributes of Allah. There's a beautiful hadith from Al-Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. This is an authentic hadith. Abu Basir narrates it from Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Al-Imam al-Sadiq quotes Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The Imam alayhi salam states, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbu al-jamal. Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. He likes beauty. This is your Imam alayhi salam describing Allah. Allah is beautiful. Examine all the attributes of Allah. You will see beauty and perfection. To connect to Allah, see that beauty. See the beauty in His attributes. See the beauty in His creation. One of the attributes of Allah is knowledge. Don't you gravitate to people who are smart, who are knowledgeable? Why is it that we like people who have knowledge? Because we appreciate their knowledge. Knowledge is beautiful. Knowledge beautifies you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all knowledge in the universe. Reminding yourself of this reality helps you connect with Allah. Remind yourself that my Lord is the source of knowledge. My Lord contains all the knowledge and He created all the knowledge. And knowledge is beautiful. Knowledge is perfection and perfection is beauty. That's one way to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Examine this attribute. Another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He's powerful and rich. He's the source of all power and richness in the universe. We naturally gravitate towards power and richness. You know, have you been in a gathering when someone walks in and that person is wealthy? You naturally get excited, you get up, you give them attention. Why? 
Even though you know this rich person is not going to give you anything. It's not like he's going to donate half of his wealth to you. But you still feel different when you're around a rich person. That's how society views rich people, right? Why? Because you gravitate towards richness. You gravitate towards power. Just remind yourself, if you have that difficulty connecting to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all richness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all power. That helps create a connection there. When that connection is weak, when that connection is lost. Another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He's creative. Huwal khalaq. He's creative. Don't you like creative people? If there is someone around you, if you have a friend who's creative, you gravitate towards this friend. You appreciate people with creativity. You want to see the creativity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Just look around you. He invented everything out of nothing. Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam describes this in her Fadaki sermon. Allah invented things out of nothing. He didn't examine a system and he said, let me copy it. Appreciate that. Your Lord is a creative Lord. How did he design the Adam? How did he design this universe, the solar system, the plant life, your cells, your body parts? Imagine all this creativity. If you have difficulty connecting with your Lord, remember that Allah is very creative. And we love creative beings. We gravitate towards them. We're attracted by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all creativity in existence in the universe. That's another way to find that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another attribute of Allah is His forgiveness. It's His mercy. Now someone may be powerful, may be rich, may be creative, may be knowledgeable, but they may not have mercy. You feel repelled by them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all mercy. Too often times we forget His mercy when we struggle to connect with our Lord. One beautiful hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he states on the day of judgment. It's one on one between you and your Lord. No angel involved, no one is involved. If you're a mu'min, if you have faith, you have iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your sins. Then ban, then ban. One by one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your sins. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you on the day of judgment, because of your iman, because of your faith, you have some goodness in your heart, I will forgive all of your sins. I will not let a single angel know about your sins. More than that, I'll convert them into hasanat, into good deeds. You're dealing with a Lord like that. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine now if you don't have many good deeds. This hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam states on the day of judgment, Allah is judging a person. Allah tells him, do you have any good deeds? List them. He thinks and he thinks and he thinks. He says, Ya Allah, I don't really think I have a good deed. But I've done one good thing in my life. Your believing servant passed by me. He asked me to give him water. I gave him water. That's the only good thing I can remember I've done in my life. Imagine how wretched you must be if that's the only good thing you've done in your life. I'm sure all of you have done many more good things than that. That's the only good thing he did in his life. He gave water to one of the servants of God. He says, Ya Allah, that's the only good I've done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, I have forgiven you. Angels take him to paradise. He had one good deed in the world. 